today I'm going to talk about the decline of virtue ethics and the uh, reformation. The question of my presentation is, uh, did the reformation lead to the de decline of virtue ethics? All this question, uh, Anscombe or McIntyre, they said yes, but I would say no. Uh, these days, there are three major normative e ethics. Uh, as you know, first one, virtue ethics. Second one, the ontology. In other words, Kantian ethics. The third one is utilitarianism. Uh, virtue ethics, the question is, are my actions motivated by virtue? So core value, virtues, or moral character? About the ontology, the question is, are my actions compatible with some imperative? So in this ethics, core values, duty, or rules. Utilitarianism, the question is, what will the outcome of my actions be? So the core value is consequences of actions. So that is why the purpose of utilitarianism is maximizing happiness. This is quite similar to virtue ethics. Virtue ethics and utilitarianism, both ethics seek to happiness. Uh, but virtue ethics and the ontology, not to focus on consequences of actions. Both ethics focus on action itself. So, the representative classical thinker of virtue ethics are uh, Plato, Aristotle, St. Augustine, and Aqu Aquinas. Uh, these uh, virtue ethics are uh, hugely influenced to theology, modern theologians, such as Alasdair McIntyre, Paul Ricardo. For example, Paul Ricardo uh, showed the importance of teleology of life the purpose of life. And as you send me how was and the ontology can't and this ethics huge influence to liberal Protestantism and Carlano, Catholic theology. And uh, utilitarianism representative classical thinker Benda and Mill and this ethics also influence to theology, to modern theology. Revival of Aristotelian virtue ethics. Uh, virtue ethics in 1958 uh, was uh, prompted by Anscombe's article, very short article, Modern Moral Philosophy. Uh, she argued virtue ethics can be a major alternative to utilitarian or Kantian ethics. So she uh, offered Aristotle as a, a role model of virtue ethics. Uh, she said, anyone who has read Aristotle's ethics and has also read modern moral philosophy must have been struck by the great contrast between them. Uh, his idea was further advanced by Alistair McIntyre, uh, wh who regards Thomistic virtue ethics as ideal. Alistair virtue ethics, uh, for him, a virtue in Greek arte, in Latin virtus, uh, means any kind of outstanding ability or talent. Um, Aristotle said, good men must unite two different kinds of virtue. The first two, uh, the first category is practical wisdom. Uh, it means uh, inter intellectual virtue necessary for conceiving of the right decision. Normally, Aristotle, Aristotelian virtue ethic indicate the second one, moral virtues or character virtues. 
these kinds of virtue, such as courage, temperance, and so on, can be acquired by habit, by human effort. So, so for Aristotle, this character virtue is the important. Aristotle's virtue ethics in Middle Age, uh, as you know, Aristotelian virtue ethics played only a secondary role in Middle Ages because a Christian virtue such as faith, hope, has charity has more importance. The reason why is that Aristotle's idea of virtue can cannot be accepted to theologians because for Aristotle thought not only the well educated individuals in well ordered communities are able to achieve the highest form of happiness, but that they can do so by their own devices. This is a doctrine that no Christian theologian could accept. For example, Aquinas, when it comes to happiness, he disagrees with the philosopher. True happiness can be obtained only after death. That is why Aquinas treats Arthur's happiness as a second best that is limited to earthly happiness. Even in Middle Age, the understanding of Aristotelian virtue ethics quite varied. Aquinas, Duns, Scotus, Occam, and any other adherents all different. In Renaissance, Aristotle's virtue ethics uh, <coughs> is still Uh, still popular, but harshly criticized them. In in Renaissance, uh, some philosopher argued, uh, human is the image of God. So, uh, this evaluation of humans was regarded as a gift of God's grace. This aspect has no counterpart in Aristotle at all. Important theologians and philosophers in Renaissance thought, Platonic ethics is as much more akin to Christian creed than Aristotle's. For example, the founder of Neoplatonism in Florence, Mars, Mars Celio, is it right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, thought becoming like God in Plato's work is supreme, God, supreme good. A Luther attack on Aristotle's virtue ethics. Martin Luther is the, the representative impeccable foe of Aristotelian virtue ethics. He said almost the entire Aristotelian ethics is fundamentally evil and an enemy of grace. Luther's judgment, interestingly, was not due to ignorance. He has used the Nicomachean ethics as a, a textbook in his lecture as a young professor at the University of Wittenberg before he turned reformer. More interestingly, later on Luther came to accept Melanchthon's separation of two kingdoms, the world, worldly and the hev heavenly so that Aristotle's ethics could once again become part of Protestant higher education. But this was due to largely due, 
due to Melanchthon's exertions. So I'm, I'm very interested in his understanding of Melanchthon's separation of the two kingdoms. He said, Christ did not come on earth to teach the rules of morals that were known to human reason beforehand, but to release us from our sins and to send the Holy Spirit to those who believe in him. Melanchthon treated Aristotelian ethics as a first step, a step that is necessary for human. Melanchthon's task of restoring the curriculum was made easily by the fact Luther himself was well aware of the difference between Aristotle and medieval Aristotelianism and was therefore not opposed to a return to genuine Aristotle of antiquity. The rejection of Aristotle, certain Protestants continue to reject a compromise between the Aristotelian and Christian doctrines. Normally, Christian doctrines more focus on after death, where human can true happiness. But Aristotle's virtue ethic shows in this world we can achieve true happiness by virtue. A um, friend of Erasmus, a humanist, uh, John Louis Vives, <coughs> argued Ar Aristotle's concept of happiness is incompatible with Christian salvation. Aristotle's detailed conditions of the good life is object objectionable. This applies most of all the virtue of magnanimity, the quest for the highest honors. Such values conflict with the spirit of the Sermon of the Mount. In the 16th century, there were many theologians who treat Arthur's con conception of happiness and the value of eternal goods as inimical to Christian faith. Aristotelian declaration that no one who is poor, ugly, and of low birth can become truly happy is not at all in agreement with the in principle egalitarian spirit of Christianity. For such reasons, theologians point out Australian virtue ethic are uh, incompatible with Christian virtue ethic of faith, hope, and charity. The character of virtu virtues are uh, achieved by habituation, while the Christian virtues are a gift of the Holy Spirit. So until now, uh, reformers definitely criticize, harshly criticize, greatly, greatly criticize virtue ethics, particularly Aristotelian virtue ethics. But after Reformation, virtue ethic still alive, even in Kantian ethics and utilitarianism. In interest in Kant's virtue theory has redirected philosophers' attention to Kant's long neglected doctrine of virtue. He published a book, Doctrine of Virtue. And also, uh, Hume and Nietzsche also greatly pay attention to virtue ethics. After Reformation, uh, Roman Catholic sent many missionaries to all over the world, particularly in China. In the 16th century, there were many Jesuit missionaries to China. They greatly used virtue as a contact point with Confucian 
ethics. The representative missionary is Matteo Ricci. Uh, his book, The True Meaning of the Lord of Heaven, he used a method of cultural accommodation. And also, um, uh, still a platonic virtue ethics greatly influenced into modern Augustinianism. There are five kinds of Augustinianism. The first one, Augustinian realism, invented by American theologian Reinhold Niebuhr. At that time, he greatly um, confronted with communists. So that is why he emphasized uh, the importance of hope. <coughs> and second is uh, John Rawls, Augustinian proceduralism. Uh, he emphasized justice. And third one is Augustinian civic liberalism. Representative theologian Olio Donovan, normally this type of Augustinianism based on Oxford. And Cambridge also suggested first type of Augustinianism, radical orthodoxy. This, this first three kinds of Augustinianism is uh, liberalism. But a uh, first one, a uh, radical orthodoxy is, or Augustinian orthodoxy is, is anti-liberalism. And fifth one is uh, Confucian Augustinianism. Uh, yes, <laughs> no followers. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, so, uh, uh, first one, a uh, conservative uh, Christian follower. <laughs> and second, as you know, John Lewis is a um, professor at Harvard University. Still many. Um, many followers at Harvard. <laughs> <laughs> and third one, Oxford. <laughs> and fourth one, Cambridge. Cambridge. And fifth one is right here. Uh, in Asia. <laughs> 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 yeah, this is uh, outside um, Europe and America. Uh, 75 of Christians in the world uh, live in uh, Asia and <laughs> Africa. <laughs> yeah, so uh, fifth Augustinianism, there is no follower in the UK or in mm -hmm. America, but there are many followers in China <laughs> or <Yeah>. Korea. <laughs> so uh, yesterday I more thinking about uh, reforming imagination. So how can I put our uh, reforming imagination in Confucian Augustinianism? Because uh, the purpose of life in Confucian Augustinianism is definitely happiness. How to achieve happiness? By virtue. Confucians suggest four kinds of virtue, benevolence, righteousness, a richer wisdom. But St. Augustine provided three kinds of Christian virtue, faith, hope, love. And how to achieve virtue? to obtain true happiness spread radically <coughs> in, in this world. So uh, Confucians suggest uh, four kinds of methods, uh, moral learning, moral reflection, self-reflection or contemplation, or ritual or sacrament, and fourth one is music. So I think reforming imagination is definitely neglected in Protestant theology. So I think this type of thinking method, reforming imagination, is can be put second method, self-reflection on contemplation. So uh, through this method, more learning contemplation, sacrament, and music, we can achieve virtue, and then we can op op achieve happiness in this world. Mm -hmm. Thank you.
Thank you, Yunsu, and I hope that you have.